Hello everyone, how's it going? It's great to hang out with you again for a little bonus live stream here. Um, I want to introduce you to some friends of mine. We've had a great time hanging out for the past eight weeks in video labs. They're all kind of in queue, ready to kind of go through with you guys. And um, they're gonna share with you some of their top YouTube tips for growing your audience, advice that they have for how to best grow your channel. And there's gonna be a lot of really cool stuff here. I'm looking forward to hearing what they're, what they're gonna be sharing with you guys. A lot of it's gonna be blowing your mind. Down in the description below, you can find links to each of their channels. So if one of them is a channel that you are really interested in and you really wanna learn more about and see what that creator's all about, you can, go, you can find their, their, a link to their channel down there in the description below. Now for, the, for context, before we dive in, we are all, we've all been doing Video Labs Live together, or not Live, Video Labs Online together for the past eight weeks. And we have gone through a process that takes people like how to establish a channel that's highly subscribable all the way to then how do we get it to be discoverable to how do we start engaging an audience and what analytics do we use to best determine um, you know how we can do that on our channels. So it's been like this this process we've gone through together in our private Facebook group and in meetings every week and content. It's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed hanging out with these people, and I think that you're going to enjoy hanging out with them too. But if that's something you're interested in, there's another link down there below to Video Labs. The next session starts on October 3rd. So only a few weeks from now, the registration will open. So if you want to be one of the first people in line to get notified when registration opens again for the next round, uh, the fall round of Video Labs. So it's in October, you can find that link down in the description below. But let me introduce you guys to, to some of my friends here and some of them will be joining. And if the video is bugging out for you a little bit, I apologize. I'm not really sure what's going on and I figured just getting it started would be better than not getting started at all. So um, everybody say hi to the people who are watching you right now. Uh, there we go, hey, everybody, cool. So I'm, we're gonna go through here. I'm gonna start with David, Dorian Ross, and we'll hear his, his advice for those of you guys who are creators. And uh, so, so David, introduce yourself and tell us a little about your channel and tell us your tip that you have for us. Oh, you're muted still. That's a thing that we're gonna have to work on here too. You got, you got it, there I, you go. I pushed it the wrong way. That's, <laughs> I was already. Hi everybody, I'm David Dorian Ross and my channel is called Tai Chi Fit. It's a channel where you can learn about Tai Chi at home here on YouTube. Um, what we say is the main purpose of the channel is to help you find flow, the flow of life and health inside you and the flow of connection and understanding between you. And that's what Tai Chi can teach. And so um, I've been um, really um, trying to learn a lot of things and one of the things that I was trying to learn was how to make better quality video. I went from just sort of using a webcam in the dark studio to now videos that are pretty lovely, but I think I went too far hmm. in trying to do this. And so um, my tip is that maybe you shouldn't try to be too fancy, right? Like a direct approach, getting right into the video content. Don't try to make a TV style, uh, um, introduction or, uh, you know, spend hours and hours on color separation because you're not Wes Anderson, unless you are. But otherwise, I think this was the main thing that I learned um, is that there's a lot that you can let go of and just get the content out and don't worry so much on the other stuff. Yeah. What, what are the main things that you feel like has been most important for you to focus on? So I, I, had to overcome my own ego and my own sort of attachment to television. Really, I'm old enough, like my whole orientation towards video stuff is influenced by TV. And so I had this whole, there's a, a lovely introduction and then a long thing that, you know, credits roll and all this kind of stuff. And my drop off of my videos was like the death spiral <laughs> right out the bat. And so through Video Labs and some of the conversations I've been having here, I changed that introduction to be really quick, a really quick, teaser sort of set 10 seconds or less on my logos, you know, across the page and then right into the content. And um, my audience retention went way up and I'm actually a lot happier because it takes me less time to edit and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Cool. Well, you guys can check out his, his Tai Chi channel linked up down there uh, below. Let's uh, thank you, David Dorian. Let's go to Aaron. Tell us a little about your channel and yourself and uh, what's your tip for us as creators? Hey everyone, uh, my name's Aaron. I go by Sergeant Wobble, SGT Wobble. Um, I'm new to this YouTube game. So 
my tip would be basically try and absorb everything you can. I'm not going to say that it's going to be easy when you're, uh, you know, going through Tim's videos because it's not. But if you put the work in, you will see progress. I noticed little things that I've started doing and changes and making that I'm getting ready for my YouTube channel to begin. It's like, okay, wow, I can use this now. I can use this now. If you actually take the time to listen and do the work, I promise you, I promise you, you will succeed. And that I know from Tim. So <laughs> that, that's my main, that's my main tip. <laughs> yeah. So do you feel like when you put the work into this, where, where are you going to start fo your focus on your channel? Um, well, obviously, uh, I want to start focusing on, well, like we were just mentioning, um, my thumbnails. I know that I need to work on doing those as well. I need to work on my, um, titles. I want to make sure that they're uh, clear and concise, not overburdened with extra stuff that doesn't matter. Um, those are some of the things that I, I know I could take a lot from when you were talking about it. Um, and then I guess there's a lot of different things that I, I want to apply. Um, but those are the main ones that, that I really have to, um, hone in on for yeah. me anyway. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. Well, thank you, man. If you guys want to check out his channels down there below, um, James, let's hear from you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel. Hey there, everyone. Uh, I've got a channel really dedicated to helping runners. So in the real world, I'm a uh, sports rehabilitation therapist, which is kind of like physical therapy in many ways. And I've taken the knowledge from that world and brought it to YouTube to create a channel which really helps runners run strong and run injury free. The big thing that I've taken from all the work that we've done over the last few weeks, Tim, is to, to kind of know the value that you're trying to deliver with both each video you're making, but also with your channel. Um, and be really laser targeted with that value and find the, the most effective, most efficient way of delivering that value through, in particular, going back and looking at the data which is available at your fingertips in the analytics here on YouTube. That's something which I knew was there, but didn't really have much of a, a concept of how to get deep into the analytics and uh, interpret to yeah. make what I'm making better. So know your value, know how to deliver it. Is there anything that you feel like is, is an idea that you have of how you're going to deliver value better now on your channel? I think just be a little, well, firstly, be more consistent. I think lots yeah. of us can relate to consistency as being, uh, being a big thing to work on. Um, but secondly, again, just, just being more targeted in what I'm trying to focus on. Um, so lots of us watch lots of different things on YouTube. And in my head, I've been thinking, well, perhaps I should vlog or perhaps I should do a little bit of kind of almost mangle up this travel style with helping runners while I'm out and about and all that sort of stuff. But actually, looking at the data and looking at what's gone well so far, I now know that actually I need to go back to bread and butter, make good quality tutorial videos and help people solve problems because that's what yeah. I do in everyday life. And that's what comes across well on here, according to the data. Yeah, it's great. Cool, man. You guys know your value proposition, know what it is and know how to in integrate it into your, into your content. Super, super important. Um, let's see, go to Kate. Hey, Kate, tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel. And uh, well, my, my channel is Kate Schaefer Soul Portraits. Um, I'm an artist and I paint uh, metaphor paintings for people who have experienced trauma so that they can see themselves as being strong and their lives uh, full of joy. Great. Uh, my, my big tip um, and I'm also brand new to uh, YouTube and I would echo the sentiment, just do the work. Um, a life lived in fear is a life half lived. So, you know, just go ahead and put the stuff up there and, um, and learn as you go. Uh, it's something I learned in this course and I'm, I'm very excited to start doing that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Just sometimes people like it, like they just get, they just get paralyzed and don't ever start and they kind of miss the whole opportunity of what they could be doing. So just get started and it is hard work, but one of the things I teach my kids is that good work brings good rewards. And yeah, that sounds what you're, what you're saying too. Cool. Thank you, Kate. You guys can check out her channel down below as well. Um, let's go to Ken. Hey, Ken. Tell well, we, we yeah. are Ken and Marianne Faree and we're, known as the entertainers buffalo and brandy that's what our channel is and we've tried 
uh, like our, our value proposition is educational children's mus music, enlightening the heart and brightening the mind. Because what, we, what we're trying to do with our channel is show how movement and activity and music can actually enrich the learning of children, where when they're engaged, they, they learn, they have fun and they learn. And we actually got the idea because we transitioned it from our live shows. We do it in our live shows all the time. And now we're just trying to present that kind of an image in our, uh, on our YouTube channel. And the tip that we have. I, I think one of the biggest tips is, is to um, stay true to who you really are. It's easy when you start making the videos to maybe think, well, if I made one about this, I could draw more viewers. If I made this, I could draw these viewers. And you don't want to try to do that. You have to stay to a narrow niche, stay true to who you are and believe in what you're actually trying to provide uh, as far as, as uh, value to, to your audience and stick strictly with that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that focus is really important too. Like what that niche is, rather than people like, ah, oh, today I'm gonna do this. Oh, tomorrow I'm gonna do that. And you're like, people are like, what? What's going on? <laughs> and it's uh, yeah, that's really important. Great. You guys should check them out, especially if if you have kids. Uh, check out their channel down below. You'll love it. Even if you don't have kids, you just want a good time. Just go watch them. Uh, Kevin, how are you, man? Um, I'm good. good. How are you? Good. Tell us about your channel. Well, tell us about yourself and your channel first. All right. Hi guys, my name is Kevin and I have a channel called The Filmmaker's Formula where I break down popular filmmaking techniques so you can replicate them in your own videos. I loved making movies as a kid and then trying to copy the great filmmakers on big screen. I really admired how they could tell a story without even saying a word. So I decided to break down some of the techniques they do and learn how to do that myself. I believe that every video has a formula behind it and if we followed it and replicated it, then we could recreate its influence. So if you're a beginner, interested in making videos or interested in creating, just come hang out. One yeah. thing that I think most people often overlook is that um, something I overlooked before Video Labs is planning. It's important to plan out your videos to know what you're going to say and why you're going to say it. That's really important. Um, people, nor people normally gravitate towards stories and a good way to plan out your content is to use a simple three act structure to have a beginning, middle and end. So if you can plan out your content in a way that tells an interesting story and gives people a takeaway, the more people you can reach with your content. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people just kind of think like, oh, I'm just going to talk about myself and it's going to be awesome. Everyone's going to love it. And that three act structure, people are like, it needs a beginning, a middle end. People are like, well, how, what else would it have? And the, like that, can you just outline like what happens in the beginning, middle, beginning, middle and end? Can you give us a quick outline so people can kind of wrap their heads around that a little bit? Yeah, the beginning is the hook. You want to tell people why they're there and give them the value straight away. Like, this is why you're here. Mm -hmm. And then the middle is the meat. You got to provide the content. You got to say what you provided in the beginning. You got to fill it out. And the end is just wrapping things up, giving them a summary, and then telling them to give them a call to action. Tell them to do something. That's right. Yeah, or if, it, or if it's a story, it's kind of more along the lines of um, the like the problem is introduced in act one, then they try to overcome the problem in act two, and then they actually overcome it in act three, you know, then there's a quick resolution and, and it's done. Right. So thinking in terms of that structure about a character who wants something overcomes conflict to get it and experiences transformation as a result, that's act one, two, and three. So very important. Cool. You guys want to check it out? The filmmaking, um, the, the formula, you guys can check that out down there. Check his channel out. Um, Kristen. Hi, Kristen. How are you? Hey, I'm great. Good. So, beginning of Video Labs, my, well, my name is Kristen Link, and beginning of Video Labs, I had a self-development YouTube channel, and I learned that I needed to niche down. So, as of today, I have a fitness channel uh, focused on helping busy millennial women get fit without needing a gym membership. Mm. And my big tip is to remember to hook your audience because when I would do a lot of talking head videos in the past, I would think hooking my audience was taking the best content and just putting it in front before the result of the video. But that doesn't really grab people's attention at all. In fact, it confused people. So um, although content is key, also have to create that engagement, create curiosity and excitement in your video. Yeah. So, so how do you think you'll be doing that in your fitness videos coming up? 
Uh, just doing um, some fitness montages of workouts, uh, adding music, uh, maybe do uh, inspirational clips of things that just make people go, wow, I want to do that. Yeah. And, and then... And then setting the audience retention graphs the whole time so that you know like if the if the content you're adding and the music and everything is actually performing the way or delivering the value the way you want it to. So that's awesome. Cool. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention for you guys who are watching here live, we want to answer your questions. I know I see a bunch of them going through and we want to, um, try, as a group, collectively try to answer some of these questions for you guys that you have. So if you have questions, feel free to add them in the chat and all of us will just try to pick some of them out and answer as many of them for you as we can. But before then, let's go to Nick. Hey Nick, how are you, man? Hi everyone, greetings from Switzerland. I am Nick Redmark. I'm a web engineer and a professional coach in training. And my passion is really in this intersection between tech and psychology and how it can be used for personal development. Uh, as you have heard, um, everyone has had to like focus or, or find their own niche and value proposition. Mine is still a work in progress. I'm my best um, candidate right now is to go deep into the science and art of changing habits. That's what at least I'm probably going to be focusing on in the next uh, couple of months. Anyway, um, yeah. No, go ahead. Yep, I was going to say what the habits are, but you can tell us about that on your channel. So yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, anyway, the tip, since everyone has already talked about niching down, my tip would be audience retention. And this is something, so if you're overwhelmed by the analytics part, uh, if you have to focus on one thing, it would be audience retention. Meaning, if you put the video out there, go and check how much of it people are actually watching. And this can answer many questions, can answer a question, how do you get more subscri subscribers? Make videos that have a higher audience retention. Should I, shall I make longer or shorter videos? Well, just make videos that people watch. So it simplified the world a lot for me uh, to focus on this, um, on this metric. Yeah, the audience retention, like I even mentioned with Kristen, is just so key to understanding not just like are people saying they love your content in the comments, but do they actually love it enough to watch the whole thing, right? And how many do and where do they drop off? Very, 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 very practical uh, thing. So yeah, thank you for mentioning that, Nick. You guys want to check out his channel? Link to that is down below as well. Um, Rusty. Hey, Rusty. Tell us about yourself and your channel. How's it going? Um, I, I would like to take credit for being the inspiration for Tim's wardrobe, uh, but he he developed that on his own, you know, as I did, you know, independent of one another. So anyway, we we're well dressed uh, men, and uh, we 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 enjoy that. Yeah. Um, I, my channel is a is a DIY channel of doing projects of all different types of uh, from simple things like shelves, like like on the wall there, that kind of thing, through major uh, bathroom remodels and renovations, that sort of thing. So the, and the intent is to, to encourage people who have some inclination to want to, to do that sort of thing, to realize that, you know, it, it's not necessarily as, as difficult as it, as it appears. Some things are, but a lot's not. And it's, and so my intent is to kind of help you maybe get started by watching some of the things that I do. Um, my, I have about uh, over, over 50 videos now over the last uh, year and a half or so. And then, in that process, there's been just an evolution of, of, of experience in doing that creative process. And so I want to just share a, a tip about that. When you start making videos, you, you invest an incredible amount of time, more time than, than, than you can even, even fat, even, even fat the creative process in videos, but there's green screen techniques involved with that. There's, there's 15 seconds creating that green screen reasons for mold in showers, basically, you know, doing a bathroom remodel. Uh, and, and I wanted to do kind of a, an anatomy of a shower that sort of showed, you know, I, people may not know how, how all that stuff goes together. So I wanted to do that. Started uh, trying to finish the video, create, committing time to do it. Stopped to eat lunch, came back and thought, you know, something, something? no, get it done, get it out. And, uh, and so together and get it done. Um, or, 
Oh, but what's the system that even generates? Because nothing is. Let's see, is it back now for you guys? Um, this is why. This is the joys of live streaming right now. Yeah. I'm hearing yeah. Okay, good. No, not back yet. Video is back. Yes, back. Yay, back now. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm glad that we're back. Sorry about that. This is how live streaming goes. It's just, uh, I don't really know what's going on. But, so, Sean, you were saying, like, it's really important to um, find, like, your niche inside your niche, yes. right? So, for someone who's watching this and they're just like, I just want to make videos about movies. That's pretty mm -hmm. broad. Like, how would you niche that down? Uh, figure out kind of the subgenre that gets you excited, that gets you amped up um, and kind of dive into something specifically, whatever you're kind of wired to do. I'm kind of a big picture person. So talking about movie franchises on big picture level and ranking them worked really nicely for me. I've got some buddies of mine that are like really into the horror niche. And so they know something really specific and that's a way for them to kind of narrow it down and find a sub community within the movie lover space to enjoy it. But like, what's that type of content? Like, what are you, if you're reading movie blogs, what do you find there that you don't find on YouTube yet? Mm -hmm. What types of videos do you see outside of the movie space? You go, you could do that for movies and pull that idea over into the space. Find something that yeah, no one else is doing. Yeah, yeah, cool. That's good. Sweet. If you guys want to check his out, I think you'll like it. Uh, I'm not even like a really big movie buff guy, but Sean's entertaining and you get to kind of, if you just want to hang out and talk <laughs> movies and go... Go check out Sean's channel down there below. It's called Sean Likes to Talk About. Are you going to finish that sentence or is this going to say that Sean Likes to Talk About? <laughs> what? The name of your channel? Uh, Sean Chandler Talks About Movies? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think on YouTube, I think it's truncated, I think is what I saw. I'll have to, I'll uh -oh. have to check it out. That's again. not good. Yeah, yeah. You need to look into that. Um, all right. So we've got uh, one more person for you guys and then we are going to start – oh, no, two more people for you. Then we're going to start digging into your – uh, into your questions. So keep putting those in the chat and we will dig into them here in a second, assuming all of this works. <laughs> um, let's go with you, Stephanie. Hello. How are you doing? Hi, Hi. Um, I'm Stephanie and uh, come here. this is my medical alert dog, Rue, but uh, on YouTube, I'm known as Sable Pixel Adventures, where uh, we make gaming videos that try to make your day just kind of by sharing the joy that gaming brings me. And there's like a whole creation story behind that, that that's one thing you should have on your channel's creation story that we need to do. But um, my bit of advice for you guys is that um, as you're going along, YouTube sometimes can get a little discouraging and you really need to have like a really like strong, like compelling reason to keep coming back and keep creating content. So have that like that like motivation, that drive that doesn't matter how tough it gets, doesn't matter if you're not gaining subscribers, doesn't matter if you're not gaining views, something that keeps you coming back and keeps you saying, what can I do to make this better? Like and just keep pushing. What is that for you? Uh, well, for me, it is the fact how much I absolutely love gaming and kind of how I kind of came to that realization and then realizing how it's not quite 100 percent for me where like I was playing and I was enjoying it, but I'm like, there's something missing. And then once I started making videos and like sharing it and like connecting and engaging with people and I'm like, this is it. This was what was missing for me. And I kind of want to share that with people just because like, you know, quick thing. I, you know, I used to play games as a kid and then like I've had a lot of health issues, thus the medical alert dog. Um, and then I came back and it's just, it's just so much joy that I just want to share with people. And like that passion to share with people is what keeps me kind of yeah. coming back. Yeah, that's great. Cool. You guys can check out her channel linked up below as well. And before we dive into your questions, let's hear from Angelina. Hi. Hi everyone. I'm Angelina and my channel is Blueprint DIY, where we take thrifted clothes and remake them to be just as unique as us. And um, on my channel, 
We just remake clothes. I have a passion for teaching others how to remake clothes all the way from the most simple, simple edit that will completely change your wardrobe all the way up through just the most amazing, unique. And I'm so excited. Well, kind of sad to be finishing up our class. I've learned to algorithm is not that takes lightning and strikes different channels just at a whim. Um, I've learned the, I've learned how to work with it. Once you understand the algorithm and just the things to do, you know, not trying to game the system, but just the things to do, then it, they work. The things, you know, that you learn about the algorithm and just how to work with it they work. And so that's one thing I've learned. I've seen so many YouTubers get discouraged. Big YouTubers get so discouraged um, thinking that YouTube is out to get them. And um, but they've been doing the same kind of content for, the same way for years and they won't look um, within or at their own channels and freshen them up. And so I'm at the point where we just freshen my channel up. So that is so another right time. <laughs> So right. if that's not happening, maybe we don't have the right video or we don't have the right target audience or something, but it's like us, it's things that we can fix. We can, we can craft better content. We can be more specific with nails better. So what, what advice would you guys give them about your thumb, about creating better thumbnails? Go ahead, Angela. One thing. One thing I learned is that um, people like smiling faces. And um, one thing Tim taught us is that they need to be able to see the white of your eyes. And so that was something that I wasn't doing very well at all. And so I've definitely tried to improve that. And then your thumbnails need, mobile is big. Most of your videos are gonna be watched on mobile. And so you need to make sure that your text or your um, image can be seen at a very, very small size. Yep. Yep. So optimized for mobile for sure. Anything else? Go okay. ahead. Uh, less is more. Don't try to put all kinds of text and everything on a thumbnail because people will flip right by it. It's better to have it bright, have it jump out at you, have it pop out with lighting and you know, less is more. And that'll encourage them to continue watching the video. Yeah, that's good. Anything else? Yeah, so set your thumbnail up so that, yeah, as we just said there, it really stands out, but then also works with the title that you're associating with the thumbnail so that you've got a degree of intrigue with the title. And then once you've got people to click using the thumbnail and the title, that aligns with the hook in your video. So people are clicking in and going, yes, this is what I expected. Let's watch it. Yep. Yeah, a couple other tips in the chat. Um, Visanantamania, sorry, I got that one wrong. Um, by the yeah, okay. So having an emotional face it can, on the thumbnail can be helpful. And then I like behind the scenes NYC said, I always take a professional picture for the thumbnail to have great quality and very simple. And I, I find that's very important too. Like just take a picture rather than taking a still frame, just set it up and then pose and take the picture in like a nice high resolution image. It gives you a lot more latitude when you're editing and cropping and trying to do any sort of color grading to it or something like that. Um, that, that can make a big difference um, as well. A few people asking questions about audience retention. They're like, my audience retention is good. Um, but do you guys have any, you guys here, do you have any, you have any um, suggestions on how people could make their audience retention even improve? These creep and you'll be able to point them in the right direction to stay and keep that uh, that viewing session going. Yes, yes, good. Go ahead, Dave Dorian. Um, did I hit the right button there? Yep, <laughs> so, yeah. um, long talking head stuff um, it works against sort of the short attention span of the typical uh, YouTube viewer. If you are going to sit and chat with with the camera. Um, there are ways of changing the, the closeness of the image or um, you know, give it a different angle or put in B-roll so that the imagery continues to um, engage the viewer's attention. But if you're just like, like I'm doing right now, just like I would have already lost five viewers just talking this long. <laughs> of course, that could just be me. I don't know. Just... 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, the guys I know who are really good at YouTube, they have like really big channels that are growing pretty well, pretty quickly. They know exactly how long they can talk before making a cut, or how long their wife can talk versus how long they can talk, or how quick, how often they need to put a kid in there, or cut to a different scene. Like they know all those metrics that keep people watching. So it just comes with time and a lot of evaluation and studying. Now I'm gonna throw a quick question. Uh, kind of a, it's not a trick question necessarily. It's a common question, but I want to hear how you guys answer it. Because my goal at Video Labs is to teach them how to think and how to approach YouTube. So I want to see, this is this will be your your, your quiz, your, your test, okay? So, um, oh, I lost it. I think it was Yank Nation who said, um, or in Garage Time, Astro, a few people have kind of kind of said this. It's like, um, what is good audience retention? I'm getting 50% retention. Is that good? How would you guys answer that? Um, I would say, yeah, I think what we discussed, like your goal should be to have at least like half the people make it to the end of the video. I mean, I saw a few people saying that on some of their videos, they were getting like 60% and everything. And that's, that's fantastic. That's, that's a ton of people making it all the way to the end of the video. So I would say that 50% is what you kind of should be, what would be a good, like if you're getting 50%, you're doing a good job. Okay, yeah, 50% of the end is a good way of looking at it. What else? How else do you guys answer that? Go ahead, Sean. Uh, I think some of it depends on the video that you're doing. Some of my reviews are 60 minutes long if it's a spoiler for a big event film and I'll get 20, 25 minute long average view durations, which is, you know, not great audience retention, but it's amazing watch time. So that's one way to kind of consider some of that. Um, but also it's uh, for that audience retention is, did you get to them to a point in time that they took a next step? And that's kind of what I've been working on because of this course is figuring out, oh, people are dropping off before I have that call to action. Because with reviews, it's I say the score of the movie, I say what's number one in the ranking and they just leave. So I've had to rearrange how I design them. So the audience retention lasts until the point in time where I can point them to what's next. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else want to add anything to that? I think also to make use of the relative retention rather than just looking at absolute. You know, if you can keep your relative retention above average, then that's going to give you a really good indication that you're doing well rather than just looking at the absolute um, as a, as a one-off metric. I think that's something that I've, I've really ignored in the past and, and, because because I didn't understand it, um, and now I do. So there. Yeah, I, I see a lot of people in the chats. Everyone's kind of sharing their their retention. Like now I have this percent. Is that good? Mine's thirty. Is this good? I think you guys can always just compete with yourself. Like you're at thirty percent. What do you need to get to thirty five percent? You're at forty percent. You're at fifty. You're at ninety percent. You're almost there. What do you have to get to 100? You got 100%. What can you do to increase the replay value and get to 110%, right? Like there's always there's always room to grow and improve. And so rather than being like, oh, I'm at 50% and be like, okay, I'm content now. It's like, no, like just what can you do to, to grow and to do better and, and, and deliver the value that you want to deliver even better than you have before? So I think that you know, that's, that's another perspective that I think of rather than like, well, I have a kid channel and I have a gaming channel and you have a, you know, a vlog channel and a house, they should all somehow be performing the same, you know, and, and the audience makes a difference too. If you're going after like eight to 12 year olds, they're going to give you a different kind of viewing session than a busy working mom with five kids at home is going to give you. Right. So there's a lot of variable variables to consider. I don't think that we can just say like one is good and one is bad because I, I know people who have um, like good retention, but then they end the viewing session and people leave YouTube and so the video is not doing well, right? So there's there's a lot of different factors to to consider uh, to that. So um, so let's see here. Compete with yourself. Brilliant. Yes, Dr. Brad. Let's see. Um, so one of the other questions that has been, has been coming through um, re around retention is how do you re retain viewers? I see uh, T Mac Music kind of asking this. Um, so, in terms of like, what, what, what advice would you guys give someone who feels like they have a high turnover rate in their subscribers? Like, people subscribe, hang around for a little bit, and then they unsubscribe. What would you say might be the culprit there? You guys didn't know you're going to get a quiz, like a test at the end of Video Labs publicly. <laughs> huh? I think maybe if they, if the new subscribers are. Uh, 
are realizing that they're not perhaps getting what they signed up for. So yeah. delivering, delivering on the promise of that value proposition that you've made on your, on your channel or in the videos that they initially stumbled over. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, that comes down to knowing what the value is, knowing what you're here for, knowing what you're trying to present rather than just having this kind of a scattergun approach. Exactly. So yeah. yeah, just nailing, nailing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, David Dorian, I saw you raising your hand and then Ken as well. Um, I was uh, saying that that typically sounds to me like um, people searching for uh, the kind of video they want to make. Perhaps they don't have a, a, a distinct value proposition or a niche that they're going through. And so they're um, trying their hand at a variety of different topics or trying to always go with trending topics. But somebody who subscribes to the channel because of one video and then the next time you upload a video, it's like about, you know, chocolate milkshake and you're like, uh, I did right. I changed my mind. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Ken, were you going to say something there or no? Basically the same thing. It just, okay. uh, make sure you target, make sure you know what your audience is that you want to build and target the videos for them and not yeah. try to be all over the place. Yeah, a mistake that creators often make here is that they know what their value is and they know what they're, what they're trying to do, but they don't communicate it well. And so if you don't communicate to the audience, this is the value I intend to, I intend to deliver to you, then they're forced to kind of figure that out on their own. And so they might say like, oh, I, I love this channel because of blank, but it's not really aligned at all with what you're trying to do. So I love this channel because he's funny. Oh, I love this channel because he goes cool places. Oh, I love this channel because they show me how to do something better. And all those might be a part of the content. But if you say, hey guys, subscribe to this channel because we believe uh, that changing the world, through, I don't know, whatever is like the, whatever. You like, you give them the lens through which they should they should evaluate the value of your channel. And so if you don't tell them that, then they'll figure it out on their own. And if it's not what you're thinking, it just becomes confusing. So that, that clarity and, that, and that how you communicate that is, um, uh, is important. So a lot of really good questions here. Um, let's do this one. How important do you think consistency is in quality? Um, can you can you have one that's like super high polished and the next one is just kind of like a web an hour long webinar <laughs> or whatever like how how important is that do you guys think i think it's pretty important to be consistent your viewers be, they begin to expect a certain quality um from you when they're watching your videos now if they're different series and they have different um and the each series has a different feel then that may be a little bit different but i think your viewers do come to expect a certain level, whatever that the level is, they begin to expect it from you. Yeah. Anything else? Like, go ahead, Dave. Doing. Um, believe it or not, I, I think that sometimes um, what matters more than a consistent uh, sort of level of quality of the video itself is how much care or, or, or uh, love I don't know, that you put into the video uh, uh, comes through. So, you know, maybe you didn't have all your camera equipment with you on that one day, or, you know, you, you had a message that you wanted to send out and you didn't set up, you know, a, an elaborate step for it. But what you wanted to talk about and the passion that you had, that comes through the video. Now, I'm, I'm not saying you, you should just like never care about your video uh, quality, obviously you should care. But I think with the, what, what matters more is the care of what value you're giving and that's 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 more than the technical quality yeah for sure go ahead sean yeah to kind of build off what he just said of that key there has to be the central quality of your value position is what really proposition is what really matters like with my channel um it started to take off over the last six months and because of that all these videos i did a year a year and a half ago are being recommended by youtube and the quality compared to now is very different <laughs> production wise. They're longer. It's a lot more just kind of me talking. And it, so I get really nervous about that personally that, man, these videos are not as good. They are not at the same quality levels where I'm at right now. But people that want to talk about movies, it's still providing that for them. It's that central value proposition is still there, even though it's not nearly as slick as things are now. So um, it's the key thing is having what people show up to get from your channel needs to be the same. 
Yeah. And I literally don't get any comments trashing my old content that even the, my brain trashes it all the time. Right. Yeah. Um, we have a good question here from Cinemono. Cinemomo. What are some ways to find good keywords when you're an entertainment slash comedy channel? Not sure how to make my topic searchable. So just in general, like guys here at Video Labs, we spent a few weeks just talking about discoverability. Um, are, are keywords the direction you guys would go? Or, or if he wants to make searchable content, what, what would you advise? Like, I should say not searchable, discoverable content. Because a lot of people, you guys, like remember, search is only one part of YouTube. There's suggested videos, there's homepage, there's related content, there's um, all sorts of, um, there's subscription fees. There's a lot of different ways to be discoverable. So what, what would you guys here recommend that, that he do if he wants to make discoverable content? Well, we learned to make the titles for people and not for the algorithm. So when I say that, I mean, make something, make your title something that somebody would want to click on um, versus trying to shove like every keyword that you can into it. Yes, keywords are important, but make the title something that someone else will want to click on and that will deliver the value that you're trying to deliver. Right. Yeah. Keep your keywords in mind, but write them in normal conversational English for people. That's right. What else? Go, go ahead, James. Yeah. I mean, I don't know uh, in terms of the asker, I don't know kind of how much traffic your videos are getting at the moment, but if you've got a video on your channel that's doing better than other videos on your channel, you can think about going after those related views. So mm -hmm. really target to the same topic that that video that's doing well is doing and make another video on that topic and try and jump on board that related train so that's that people right. are going from this video to the next. Yeah, can you map out the viewing session a little bit for that for that viewer, yeah? Kristen, Stephanie, Kevin, Nick, Aaron, any of you guys, Rusty, Kate, got any ideas? Well, make sure that the title is, is actually what's in your video um, so that people know that right away what it is. And then you can put the tags that make, um, that make YouTube identify it uh, so it will come up when it's related to other similar videos that other people have posted. Yeah. Go ahead, Kevin. I think don't worry too much about your keywords and tags. Just make it relevant and um, just focus on making good content, things that people would want to share organically, and you should be able to rank in that manner. Yeah. Kristen? I, would, I personally would think about what type of comedy videos I want to make. Like if you want to do infotainment where you're educating someone but also making it funny and then look at – someone else who is doing just that and see how their videos are doing as far as views and then do something relatable to that. Like, um, I believe James was saying earlier. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and hooking that. Oh, go ahead, David. Dorian. Go ahead. Branded thumbnails. Mm. Right. So imagine that, um, for a variety of different factors, your videos will appear, um, in different, discoverable places on the homepage, on the sidebar, whatever. And in three seconds, the people who are, you know, there on YouTube will uh, make a decision whether they want to click through and watch it or not, and therefore discover you. And if the thumbnail is the thing that they're going to be seeing in three seconds. So having a good thumbnail, but also one that's branded. So they go, Hey, that's that guy with the thing with the, with the comedy. Duh. And then they'll come back to yours. Yeah, totally. Good. Um, so little kitchen, big food. Thanks for the, for the super chat. How long does it take the, for the algorithm to recognize a title change and thumbnail change? What should I look for in analytics? Great live session. Um, so that's more of a technical question. They, they know when you change it right away, cause they change it. If you click save and it changed, they know that the, that, that you change it so that they know right away. Um, in terms of what should they look for in analytics? What would you guys say the top things that you... I found to be helpful for your channel and going actionable stuff. Go ahead, Stephanie. Um, um, I would say like once you've changed something, if you see like a higher click through rate, if you see like, you know, more obviously like a kind of like if the, the like click through is kind of like stagnant and then you change it and then suddenly you see like, 
you know, it start to kind of pick up again. That's kind of how you know, like, you know, it's it's been recognized. People are seeing it more and it's kind of getting more engagement. Yeah, yeah, it's good. What else? You can also go directly into that video and look at the analytics for specifically that video. Is the watch time going up on that video? It is, you know, are there is that particular video getting more views? Right. And also you can watch your real time views to see if, you know, your real time views are starting to pick up. Yeah. Yeah, Rusty. I think some of us have been surprised to to have, have overlooked the the importance of, of playlist to increase uh, views on individual videos and just by making some minor modifications to titles and arrangement of playlists you know i mean i, I personally have seen a, a bump in views that's pretty much unexplained with the exception of that idea yeah definitely great well if you guys want to check out any of their channels links are in the description below you can go check them out subscribe hang out and watch how they do some of them are starting off on their journey here on youtube some have been around and you'll see some big changes coming in the future yeah go check out aaron uh, with his gaming and stephanie and uh, Kristen with uh, fitness and kevin's doing this filmmaking um thing and like all these guys are doing just something that He's going to reach people and change their lives. And so I recommend you guys check them out and follow along with what they're doing. If you'd like to join us in the next video lab, there's also a link down there. Where you can sign up to get notified when the next session starts, October 2nd. So we've got about one month here. I'll be opening it up here in the next few weeks. So if you want to be the first to get notified and join me for eight weeks of um, just going through some of the most intense YouTube, like, this I tell people all the time that it's a lot of work, and most of the time, yeah, everyone's nodding their heads now. They uh, they they think it's going to be a lot of work, and then they get in, and they're like, I didn't think it was going to be this much work. So I'm just telling you that up front. Like, take around what would you guys say, five to eight hours a week just to work on the assignments and stuff. Some saying yes, yeah, yeah. Some people are like no more. <laughs> um, yeah, five hours ish. Okay. So yeah, I, I think that. Um, this, we'd love to have you guys, and uh, if you feel like it's right for you or not, you can check that out and and spend eight weeks with me going through this process of building a, a channel that's going to be subscribable and giving you like a content strategy so that you, you know like what content you're making and why and what the goal of it is, what's supposed to in, in, intended to accomplish, and just growing a, like a really highly subscribable channel so that you can reach people and change their lives. And I love, thank you guys who are here for giving me that opportunity to do that with you. And I uh, can't wait to see where you guys go from here. I feel like the, like the daddy who's launching them on from graduation. They're about to go to college and leave their daddy. That's weird. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're about to, to, to go on. And um, so I'm excited to see where you guys go. So, Ken, did you have something you, want, that you wanted to say there? I thought, at first, I thought you were telling me five hours. But I think you were actually no, I, I saw a few people reference whether, you know, asking what we got out of YouTube video labs. And some wanted to know if... Uh, anybody's channel took off and all this and that's and i think a few of them did but the biggest value that you can take away from this which we i think a lot of us didn't realize is the amount of content that we didn't know that we're going to be able to work on for days and weeks and months coming coming up that's going we know for a fact is going to to make our channels even greater or great yeah so that Tim. Yeah. yes thank you Tim <laughs> yeah you're welcome yeah so it's just learning it's not just learning information but then we're like working together to actually implement it on our channel so it's like at the end here you guys have been working with me and each other for eight weeks and you guys hopefully got that ne those next the bottom steps line is it's you. well worth it <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah and I know some of you guys some of your channels have been taken off now after just a few short of these little things and then some of you guys I know I won't point anyone out but like you've already made back 4x the amount you invested into this thing because of this so that's been awesome to hear I'm really excited about that um, so we're looking forward to seeing where you guys go. So anyway, then me me for this to turn to a pitch. But for those of you guys who are interested, you can find a link down there and love to love to hang out with you for eight weeks and do with you what I've been doing with these guys and uh, see you guys reach your goals on YouTube as well. So thank you for hanging out, and we will see you guys again soon for another video creators live stream slash podcast episode. See you guys then. Bye.